In this video I'm going to talk about the dopamine system. I'm going to show you where dopamine occurs in the brain. I'm going to show you how dopamine is synthesized and broken down. And I'm going to tell you about the receptors for dopamine and their importance in neuroscience. First of all though, why is dopamine why is the dopamine system of such interest to biomedical neuroscientists? Well, it's involved in a number of important processes and diseases. First of all, it's involved in Parkinson's disease. The dopamine system is implicated in schizophrenia. It's also implicated in attention deficit disorders, and of course, it's also quite heavily implicated in drug addiction. So let's have a look at where these dopamine pathways actually are. So here we have an image of the brain, and you can see that there are actually a number of different pathways. Let's start with the nigrostriatal pathway, which is this one here. The nigrostriatal pathway starts in the substantia nigra and projects to the striatum. And this one is particularly important in the generation of movement. Another important one is the mesolimbic pathway and this is of particular importance in our study of addiction because that starts in the ventral tegmental area and projects to the cortex but also to cortical, subcortical structures and other structures such as the nucleus accumbens. And this is important in the formation of habits and of learning. Another pathway is the mesocortical pathway, which starts in the, uh, again, the ventral tegmental area and then projects up through to the cortex. And a third one, which we're not going to mention too much today, is this tubero-infundibular pathway, which projects mostly to the pituitary and controls the secretion of things like prolactin. So the important ones for us are the nigrostriatal pathway and the mesolimbic pathway. So that means that the dopamine system is involved in three functions. Motor generation, which is associated with the nigrostriatal system. It's also involved in behaviour and that links it with both the mesocortical and the mesolimbic pathways and it's also involved in endocrine control and that's to do with its link with the tub tubero-infundibular pathway. So when it comes to addiction, this is the system that we're particularly interested in here. Behaviour and it's linked with the mesocortical, but more importantly perhaps with the mesolimbic pathway. This projection from the ventral tegmental area here to the limbic structures here, which control emotion and motivation. When it comes to the receptors for dopamine, 
the first thing to realize is that all dopamine receptors are G protein coupled receptors. And there are actually five of them. So dopamine receptors are D1, D2, D3, D4, I think you know where this is going, D5. D1 and D5 are the they're very similar, so these are all stimulatory. Whereas D2, 3 and 4 are inhibitory. In that D1 the D1-like family, which is D1 and D5, are all coupled to uh, increase cyclic A and P. Whereas the these ones decrease cyclic AMP. So D1 and D5 are excitatory and D2, 3 and 4 are inhibitory. So now what we need to think about is how dopamine is made and how it's metabolized. The reason you should know that as a biomedical scientist is because it enables us to control the production of dopamine and therefore the levels of dopamine and gives us a point of control uh, as, as a therapy. So what we're I'll take you through the steps now. They're quite simple. We start off with tyrosine and tyrosine has, tyrosine is the amino acid with which you're probably familiar. It has this structure, the six membered ring with a hydroxyl here and then it has carbon here with a, an H2 and here a C, w, C -O -O -H. So this is tyrosine, the amino acid. The first step in the synthesis is through tyrosine hydroxylase. And what tyrosine hydroxylase does is to add another hydroxyl here. And this now produces not tyrosine, but L-DOPA. And this is the rate limiting step. L-DOPA is important because it's a drug which has been used in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. So now we've got L-DOPA and the next step in our synthesis is to use another enzyme called DOPA decarboxylase. And what D DOPA decarboxylase does is to remove this group and that produces dopamine, which is what we wanted to make. So we now have dopamine and 
if we're a dopaminergic neuron, job's done. What we could do now is to add or apply another enzyme which is dopamine beta hydroxylase hydroxylase and that adds an OH group here and this results in noradrenaline noradrenaline right, so clearly if I don't have any dopamine dehydroxylase I can't make noradrenaline I get dopamine whereas if I do have dopamine beta hydroxylase I don't get dopamine I produce noradrenaline so you can see the relationship between dopamine and noradrenaline is simply one of the presence of this enzyme here so there are several points then at which we could potentially control the amounts of dopamine using drugs.